Python tutorial Bruges Pag and Test. Multiple regression assumptions consist of independent variables correct specification, independent variables no linear dependence, regression correct functional form, residuals no autocorrelation, residuals homocysticity, and residuals normality. This topic is part of multiple regression analysis with Python Curse. Feel free to take a look at Curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. Residuals homocysticity consists of evaluating whether regression residuals or forecasting errors have a constant variance. This is evaluated through bruch pagan heteroscasticity test, which consists of using squared original regression residuals data as dependent variable, together with original regression independent variables, and assessing if independent variables are jointly statistically significant. For full reference, I recommend that you read Bruch and Pagan, a simple test for heteroscasticity and random coefficient variation, published in Econometrica in 1979. As a formula, we have that current period original regression forecasting errors or residuals to the power of 2 are equal to an alpha intercept plus, and here we have the example of a regression with two independent or explanatory variables, therefore plus beta 1 multiplied by x1 at time t plus beta 2 multiplied by x2 at time t plus this regression forecasting errors or residuals. And what we're testing is Bruch Pagan Lagrange multiplier statistic p value. If Bruch Pagan Lagrange multiplier statistic p value was less than alpha percentage level of statistical significance, then residuals were heterostatistic with 1 minus alpha percentage level of statistical confidence. On the other hand, if Bruch Pagan Lagrange multiplier statistic p value was greater than alpha percentage level of statistical significance, then residuals were homostatistic with 1 minus alpha percentage level of statistical confidence. Great, so let's go into Python PyCharm IDE so that we can study residuals homocysticity with greater detail. Excellent, so here we are within Python PyCharm IDE. In this tutorial, we'll be working within Python tutorial, Bruch, Pag, and Test. So within this code file, the first step is we're going to do packages importing. So we're going to import NumPy SMP, then pandas SPD, then from stats models we're going to import regression.linear underscore model as RG, then tools.tools .tools as CT for our constant or intercept, and then stats.diagnostic as DG for Bruch Pag and Test. The following step is to create data for Bruch Pag and Test. So we have this data object equals to PD or pandas dot read underscore CSB and within it the path to the data file found within data directory and its name Bruch Pag and Test Data as a plain text file with .csv or comma separate values. Index column as date, and we parse those dates as true. So we open that data file. As mentioned, we have a plain text file with .csv or comma separate values. The first column here is dates. Notice them have a monthly frequency from the beginning of 1997 all the way to the end of 2016, therefore 20 years of data. Then we have stocks dependent variable. That corresponds to SPY ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the Standard & Poor's 500 index, and it corresponds to its monthly arithmetic returns of its adjusted close prices, adjusted close prices, which were adjusted for dividends and splits. And then we have all the independent or explanatory variables. First, with effective monthly yield of one-year treasuries, 10-year treasuries, high yield corporate bonds. Then we have the monthly inflation or deflation of CPI, Consumer Price Index, PPI, Producer Price Index, then the prices, monthly arithmetic returns for oil, and then we have the monthly arithmetic change of the Industrial Production Index and PC or Personal Consumption Expenditures. So back into the code file, the following step is to perform Bruch Pag and Test. So for this, we first need to perform the original regression. So, for this data object with .loc for location and within brackets, we're going to add a new column of data 
with a constant or intercept for the regression. So with semicolons, we're selecting all the rows, comma, creating this new column name constant equals to CT, that's the feature from stats models, dot add underscore constant to this data. We're going to create a new variable named I VAR for independent variables with the names of those corresponding columns, beginning with a constant and then all the names of the independent or explanatory variables mentioned within that data description. And then we'll perform the original regression named REG, which is equal to RG feature from stats models dot OLS for ordinary least squares, in which we have the dependent or explained variable data and we select the corresponding stocks column. And for independent or explanatory variables, it's going to be data and those independent or explanatory variables that we created in the corresponding object above. Comma has a constant equals to volume dot fit. And then we're going to get this regression forecasting errors or residuals, which we're going to name RES, which is equal to REG. So that's the original regression dot RESID for residuals. So we get the original regression forecasting errors or residuals, which we're going to use for Bruch Pagan test. So then we print the residuals homoelasticity Bruch Pagan test, another blank space, and then we're going to print the following. First, Bruch Pagan LM for Lagrange multiplier test statistic, and then Lagrange multiplier test statistic p value. We're going to print both of this with NumPy rounded for six decimal places and within it the corresponding calculation. So we'll be using DG feature from stats models dot HET for heteroscasticity underscore Bruch Pagan, that's the function, and within it we include the following parameters. First, RES, those are the residuals from the original regression, the ones we calculated above, and then comma EXOG underscore HET or exogenous heteroscasticity equals data, and from data we select the columns where we have those independent or explanatory variables, IVAR, beginning with a constant and including all the previously mentioned independent or explanatory variables. And then we have at position zero, with Python notation, that's the first position is where we find Bruch Pagan LM test statistic. And at position one, with Python notation, that's the second position, that's where we find that corresponding test statistic associated p value. Excellent. So let's go ahead and run this code file. When you're doing it for the first time, you select any part of the code, click the right button on the mouse, and scroll down to the code file name to run it. But as I've done it before recording this video tutorial, its name's already stored here, Python tutorial Bruch Pagan test, so I just select it and click run. Perfect, so this opens the running console and we can visualize the results for Receals Homo says this is Bruch Pagan test, blank space, and then we have Bruch Pagan Lagrange multiplier test statistic, the associated p-value. Here we have the value for the test statistic, the associated p-value, and we can do the corresponding test as mentioned within the slides. Excellent. So now that we finished studying Bruch Pagan test, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading, or investment advice. Please, pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.